Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James. Hope you guys are all doing well and I'm back with another guide on Ark Survival Evolved. This one's been requested that I do more of a mid to late game advanced guide. And if you check out my videos I've actually shown you that we've completed the game on the channel without any mods. So if you're interested in some more in depth tactics then by all means follow that let's play. I've also got a few other guides on the channel but today I'm going to focus on some more advanced tips that I noticed that new players are not utilising. So I'm sure there's something that you can all learn here. Firstly let's talk about loot crates. These are the beacons of various coloured light that you'll see in the sky and they're essential in order to get some of the best blueprints within the game. You'll need to be a level 3 to open the first ones that are white leading up to the red ones at level 60. Sometimes you may see an orange ring round the outside of one of these supply crates and that indicates that there's better loot to be had inside but you need to be grabbing as many of these as possible as it's definitely the only way to be able to get some of the best tier loot and blueprints in the game. If you have access to a spyglass you'll see that there's some numbers on the loot crate on the outside indicating how long it has before it despawns. Some of the best blueprints can be found in the caves and at the bottom of the ocean. The difference between a primitive shotgun and an ascendant shotgun can be immense and it's one of the few ways that you're going to be able to get the better tier saddles that's going to give you the armor rating you'll need in order to be able to complete this game. So you want to hunt as many of these crates as possible. Next let's talk about cryopods. These were introduced in early 2019 and have completely changed the way we play the game. They only require a few base resources to craft them, fibre, hide, oil, crystal, polymer and metal and you can craft them at any obelisk or supply drop. They'll last for 30 days upon crafting them and if you put them inside the fridge with a dinosaur they'll last for double that. Eventually you'll be able to craft the cryo fridge and that actually recharges the cryopods. But any creature inside a cryopod will gather a 5% passive XP bonus. So you really want to be cryo freezing your dinosaurs and it makes it so much easier to carry these dinosaurs across the map. I see so many players who don't take advantage of this so as soon as you get to level 51, craft them. Next let's talk about the rare flower. This is an ingredient that you're going to use in some of the more advanced recipes in the game such as the Rockwell Mind Wipe Tonic and the Battle Tartar but they're useful just on their own. You can find them in beaver dams but if you want to go on a real farming mission and you're on the island map I recommend taking your berry gatherer to the outside of the swamp where you'll find plenty of rare flowers and these are really really useful. If you're on a farming mission for rare flowers and you go to the outside of the swamp you'll see the grasses and the reeds on the outside and taking any of your berry harvesting dinosaurs will get you a lot of rare flowers. So how are these useful? Well some of the more skittish dinosaurs on the map that tend to run away from you will actually aggro towards you when you put one in your last slot and consume it. It will give you a 10 second aggro, sending these dinosaurs towards you, making it much easier to tame. So another great tip is one of the first dinosaurs I tend to see new players tame is the Parasaur. If you can find a couple of tech Parasaurs of any level, you can actually make a farm. And this is really, really helpful in order to gather some of the more hard to find ingredients. If you have access to a chainsaw, you can get electronics, element dust, oil and scrap metal back and set up a little farm in your base just by breeding these tech dinosaurs. And the electronics will be very handy and the element dust is certainly something that you're going to be using in the end game. So I recommend getting a couple of parasaurs and waiting until they're fully grown to harvest some of the more hard to find ingredients. So my last advanced tip is in breeding. Now this subject deserves a whole video in itself but we're briefly going to go over it in a basic manner. I can't stress this enough, the key to beating this game is breed, breed, breed. 
And here I've got a selection of Baryonyx and we're going to do some basic breeding. I'm not going to go into mutations, all we want to do is get a full imprint on the best selection of dinosaurs we've got. So I've got a few Baryonyx here and we're using the advanced binoculars to be able to see the wild levels. This female here, you can see the second one in, has 30 points in health and 28 points in melee damage making it the best female that I've got. And this red Baryonyx has the best stamina. So I'm gonna breed these two dinosaurs together. Now, if you don't have access to mods, it's just a case of looking inside. And as we can see, this one's got just over 3000 health and close to 300% melee damage. So I'm gonna breed that female and the stamina from the male. None of these dinosaurs have any points put into them so far. So let's get on with some breeding. So breeding has been made a little bit easier. There's no need to have a breeding post or setting your dinosaurs to wander. It's just a case of putting the male and female next to each other. If we go into their behavior, you'll see there's an option to enable mating. So I'll set both of these dinosaurs off to mate. And what we want is the statistics from the female and the stamina from this male. I'm not going for a mutation here, we're going for a full imprint. And that is gonna greatly increase this dinosaur's use. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. As you can see, they're both mating. Now I am on my community server and it has been voted that we added the SS mod. This includes the nanny and the hatchery. So what's gonna happen is that fertilized egg is gonna go straight into the hatchery. And it just means that if we're away, we can leave these dinosaurs breeding. And when you come back in a couple of days, this hatchery will be full of eggs. So it does take one of them mechanics away. But if you're on console, all you need to do is get that fertilized egg and drop it in front of some air conditioners. Or you can use heat as well. It needs to be extremely cold or extremely hot in order to incubate your eggs. Okay, we're just gonna drop this baby in front of the air conditioners and hopefully it's got the stats we're looking for. Remember, we're looking for the mum's health, the dad's stamina and the mum's melee damage. And it appears we've got exactly what we was looking for here. There's no mutations on it. We're not gonna go into mutations. It's not about that. Now we need to imprint it. If you haven't got the nanny mod, then you're gonna to have to manually do this. It's gonna ask for various things like cuddles and walks. And this is what is key to winning this game. Now the player who imprinted upon that dinosaur is going to get an imprinted buff. A fully imprinted dino is gonna give out 30% more damage and take 30% less damage. In order to get some points on your dinosaur before you start taking it into the cave, I recommend if you're on the island map, go into Carnivore Island. There's abundance of high level creatures on here that's gonna get you your points on that dinosaur quite quickly. So we need to get some points on the dinosaur first. So imprinting your dinosaur will increase all of its stat values and the rider also gets that extra benefit. So not only did we manage to increase all of our statistics by cuddling and imprinting and getting a 100% imprint, we've also managed to get that imprinting bonus when we're, we, as the player, ride the dinosaur. So we have a far superior dinosaur to its parents. This is without even going into mutations and getting them extra points in mutations. You really can stack these things, but that's a much more in-depth guide. This is just the basics. So that's my brief advanced guide on a few essential tips. I will be doing a much more in-depth breeding guide. And of course, there is my Let's Play series that shows you entirely how to complete this game without mods. So check that out if you haven't already done so. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.